Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We are looking at brain-based learning. This section looks at input quality and coherence. There are seven critical factors in the learning process. This is from Eric Jensen's book, Teaching with the Brain in Mind. I would heartily recommend that. As far as the quality of our input, the information we give students in generally teach less information more in-depth. In-depth learning requires time for processing, organizing, integrating, and storing information. We need to slow down. Think of both our curriculum and our daily lessons not as layers of dirt, but as carrots with lots of roots. Teach less information more deeply and with lots of connections. Good teachers are not dumb trucks. Simply dumping content too quickly means that little learning will occur. And I've caught myself in this. I think it's so important to cover this, cover that, cover, 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 and I end up covering up instead of actually teaching students. Slow down. The brain requires time to process and store information. Slow down both our daily pace and our curriculum pace. And I tell this to myself as much to anyone else because I get too much coffee in me. I go too fast. I think there's too much that's too important. However, we can only take in three to seven chunks of information at a time. We need to take in less, store, process, make connections. This also means more spaces, both in the daily lesson and in our curriculums. We need to incubate and settle for things to take, you know, we need to have this settling that takes place over time. So use shorter sessions with rests and intervals. Constant exposure to new material is not how the brain works most efficiently. We need to provide more processing time. The brain is not built for constant focused input. We need to pause to link new information to earlier associations. Sleep is a necessary part of learning. It's where the organizing and distribution of memory and hippocampus occurs, and this takes time. Much of it occurs during sleep. Now, I'm not advocating that you have nap time during your classes or school, but two things. Number one, it's okay to stop and cover it the next day so they have time to sleep and process and reorganize, but also it's important to tell students and parents the importance of getting a good night's sleep. For your own studying as well, taking a nap, getting a good night's sleep is important in performing at your peak experience. The next part is coherence. Content is more likely to get attention if it is emotional, a tied to a, a positive emotion, hopefully, if it's specific versus diffuse, and if it is novel. As far as specific, students need to see the structure of the material. The brain is not as good with randomized material. If it is structured, we are better able to see the structure and integrate it with known structures in our head. Content is more likely to be meaningful, and meaningful learning means we take it in, we connect it to things already there. The opposite of meaningful learning is rote learning. You take in information and it's not connected to anything. If we can relate it to familiar prior information, always connect the new to the known. If students can be active to do something with the new information instead of passively receiving and to be reflective with it. All right. And this is the pauses, the stops, the integration. Also, if we learn it in context, for example, I could teach grammar in a grammar class apart from writing, but it is much more effective if I'm able to teach students grammar in the context of their own writing. This makes a case for project-based learning, where students are given a project or decide on a project, and then math, science, reading is taught within the context of that project. It takes a little teacher creativity and innovation, but learning will go up significant. Prior knowledge is very, 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 very important, so we must find out what students already know in order to help them make connections or revise. We could let students write out what they know before and share it with others. Small group speeches, 
where they stand up and give a small group speech in one minute and we're able to walk around. Use frequent uh, use of analogies or metaphors. These both connect the new to the known and get students practicing retrieving pertinent information by creating mind maps, mental maps, mental models, semantic maps, and graphic organizers. These are all ways for them to create coherence out of what they are learning. Here is one example of a mind map. 